Hello everybody and welcome to Doing Stuff and Things. Now once again I'm going to show you three must-do hikes for any adventurer going to Kauai. And again, these hikes are completely free. They do not require a permit or really any planning. The only condition is that it's weather permitting. And we're going to showcase all of the best landscapes that Kauai has to offer. That's waterfalls, forest, jungle, beach, and mountain. Let's go. Number one, Ho'opi'i Falls. As with many trails in Kauai, the trailheads are located in very unassuming areas. That is to say, residential neighborhoods. So keep that in mind when you come here, be respectful. Now the Ho'opi'i Falls Trail is one of my favorites simply because it is the perfect combination of dense jungle and rich forest. But speaking of walking, if you're going to tackle any of the jungle trails in Kauai, you really need to have footwear in mind, because when the soil gets wet, which it routinely does, because after all, this is the garden island, it will become a slippery peanut butter slimy mess. So definitely consider your footwear wisely when you're doing these trails. It is this reason that I've put this trail into the moderate difficulty category, because the first section is downhill and very slippery and it is the exact same hill you will have to climb back up on your return trip. So again, consider your footwear very carefully or just do what the locals do, go barefoot. At the bottom of the hill, you'll reach the river. Follow the river downstream to reach the first falls. And just like many of the trails in Kauai, there's no one set trail. In fact, many trails will spiderweb off of the main and meander in and out. So you can choose to either follow the river as I do or stay on the main trail that goes along the hillside. Personally, I always choose the river walk just because I like walking through rivers. In Kauai, if the water is brown, you do not want to swim in it because that is when a nasty little bug called leptospirosis is in the highest concentrations. This day was just after a very heavy rain, so the water is very strong today and, as you can see, very murky, so unfortunately I will not be able to get in it. But if you're here on a clear day, you can jump off the waterfall just on the other side right there on that rock shelf. However, it is tricky climbing back up the rocks on the other side of the river. So when it comes to jumping, I prefer going downstream a short distance. And always remember to check the water before jumping so you don't impale yourself on any hidden logs or sticks that might be under the water. This cliff is where I prefer to jump in the water because just on the right there is a natural rock staircase that makes it easy to climb back up. But sadly, because of the brown water, there'll be no swimming for me today. Many people turn around right here because it's such a short walk from where you park to the first falls. But if you're looking for a longer adventure, simply follow the trail back up to the main trail and start walking downstream. About a mile down trail, there's a second and bigger falls. It can be tricky staying on the main trails because so many other well-used paths do splinter off the main trail. But if you're looking to get to the second falls the most efficiently, do not peel off on any other little side trail, no matter how tempting it looks. Unless you have all day to wander through the jungle, in which case, enjoy. Be mindful of which way you're walking because you do want to continue heading downstream at all times. So when you hit this old service road, you do want to go left down it because that is still downstream. After traversing the hillside, you'll drop down into this grove of trees. And this is by far the most magical section of trail. In fact, this is a very old area. 
It's not just the staggering beauty of this area that makes this the most magical section of trail. It's the fact that in the center of this grove of trees lies an ancient Hawaiian ruin. These stacks of rocks were made by the Hawaiians who knows how long ago, and it's a very sacred place. So if you do stumble across something like this in your journeys, tiptoe around it very respectfully and under no circumstances should you take anything. Continue along the main trail until you reach a split, where the main trail clearly starts going up the ridge again. Now that will give you access to the lower section of Ho'opi'i Falls. But I imagine you probably want to see the upper section first, so this is where you're going to hang a left. Very careful on this section of trail, because we want the water to fall down Ho'opi'i Falls, not you. So just make sure if you're not very good on your feet to stay well away from the edge. After you've marveled at looking down from the top of the falls, you may want to look from the bottom up. Now you could retrace your steps to the main trail and follow it up and around. I commonly avoid shortcuts because I'm aware of the erosion issues that they can cause, but there are times where I cannot resist a natural stone and vine stair and ladder. As you can see, this shortcut cuts off quite a bit of distance to get to the main trail. And once you reach the main trail, head left and downstream. I took the first left to get down to the bottom of the falls. I imagine there's an easier way to do it if you just stay on the main trail. But as I said before, sometimes I just cannot resist a natural made stair set and ladder. This is the kind of hiking I really enjoy the most. Something that's more of a jungle gym of vines and rocks and trees versus just walking down a flat path. But if this looks a little daunting to you, stay on the main trail till you find easier access. I am so sad about the brown water because in the lagoon just to the right, there's a rope swing that looks so inviting it nearly brings a tear to my eye. I will have to come back and visit that rope swing on a calm, clear water day. Now we move on to number two on our list, Secret Beach. The access to Secret Beach is on this very unassuming, very short dirt road with plenty of parking for as many people as you can imagine. Follow the road down to this Asian-inspired house and the trailhead cuts right alongside of it. Mm -hmm. 
Similar to Ho'opi'i Falls, the trail does descend a bluff. It's a gentle slope, but unlike Ho'opi'i Falls, this trail is not nearly as slippery unless you're hiking it during a torrential rain. This is Secret Beach. I've put this adventure into the hikes category because Secret Beach is notoriously dangerous. It's well known for its rip currents and high surf, and our destination is that point of rock over there in the distance, an area called Dragon's Breath. There is bodyboarding, body surfing, and surfing here for the truly experienced, but for the average visitor, when in doubt, don't go out. Although I do realize the importance of cooling down in the tropical heat, so if you continue down the beach to where the beach meets the rocks, there's a great little spot for the average person to cool off. I do consider this trail to be easy with the most difficult section just ahead. Be sure to look up the bluffs for any of the white-tailed tropic birds nesting in the hillside. The beach ends at a jumble of rocks, and from here you'll have to boulder your way across, and these rocks get scorching hot, so unless you have well-calloused island feet, Make sure to have some footwear to get through this section. It seems obvious, but I do need to point out, you cannot do this hike during high surf, which for the most part is going to be the winter months. If you come down and the surf seems pretty high, do not attempt this hike. After the short section of boulders, you encounter this large lava shelf, and there are some pretty substantial tide pools to cool off. and your primary destination is just up on that rock on the left. This waterfall is the purpose of the hike, because who doesn't love a waterfall spilling out into the sea? Kalihiwai Beach is just around the corner, and Anini Beach is there in the distance. If you're like me and you simply cannot resist standing underneath a waterfall, bear in mind these rocks are extremely slippery. This is Secret Beach and Dragon's Breath although admittedly I never did find the blowhole where Dragon's Breath got its namesake from. Now we move on to number three and the most difficult hike on this list, Nau Nau Mountain, AKA the Sleeping Giant. On the Wailua side of Sleeping Giant is this trailhead and it is the longest trail for the Sleeping Giant at three miles each way. And this is the most difficult trail on this list simply because you're walking uphill the entire way. The first section of trail will take you through a yellow guava forest, and if you manage to find some on the trees, I recommend them. They are delicious. But never eat fruit off the ground or suspicious fruit because there is a nasty little bug called rat lungworm, and it will ruin your life. This trail passes through a variety of different environments as you gain elevation and there's a neat little picnic spot after the first mile. From here you will enter the strawberry guava bushes, and strawberry guava are also delicious. Just watch out for the little hard seeds, and again, watch out for rat lungworm. In fact, it is recommended that you wash all fruit before eating it. Remember, up is always the correct direction when you are climbing this mountain, and you will see a variety of different types of trees. The closer you get to the top of the mountain, the more interesting the trail becomes. And there are three different trailheads for this mountain but only two of which have parking lots. Be very careful to pay attention to which trail you entered on, because if you take the wrong trail out like I did, then you will be forced to either reclimb the mountain or walk around the mountain following the road. Because Kauai is the garden island, it does rain frequently, so be prepared for weather to come through, then pass, then come through again.
just before the top of the mountain. Keep your eye open for this tiny little side trail and this peekaboo puka. With one last scramble up rock, you will reach the very top of the sleeping giant. But be very careful up here. As you can see, the trail is extremely narrow with a sheer drop off on both sides. Do not be one of the many who have fallen to their deaths. The trail ends on the giant's chin and offers spectacular views of Wailua, Kapa'a, and the surrounding area. This is the Sleeping Giant.